Hey, it's Joel. It's been a while since I've actually had just a fun little quick video about something that I've printed. It's been, it's been a long time, but I printed some stuff and I, I really wanted to talk about them because I find them to be cool and I, you might find them to be cool as well. Joe Larson, he runs the YouTube channel 3D Printing Professor. He needs to upgrade the equipment in his studio and rather than a GoFundMe or dipping into savings, he had an idea and he started a Kickstarter and it's been wildly successful. It had an original goal of $500 and I think at time of recording, it's just, it's, it's above the goal. It's not at like 5 billion or nothing. I, I believe it's over five grand, which is fantastic. Good for him, good for uh, his idea. But, but the idea was a low polysor, low polysor park. And they're low poly dinosaur models. Look at these little guys, look at that. There's, he sent me a couple of these to print. This one was printed in my high five blue. Yeah. Um, it's really cool because what I, what I like about what he's doing is he's got a Kickstarter and I think there's some time left. I'll put the link down in the description. I mean, anybody can create models and put them out there for free, which I think is, is a fine thing to do. And anybody can create cool models and sell them, which I also think is a fine thing to do. But what Joe has done, he's, gamified the model creation process because the Kickstarter as as bonus goals or whatever they're called on Kickstarter, he releases more models. He releases more low poly models. And what's great about low poly models is you can print them bigger or smaller and, and they still look awesome. One of the cool things though that I like about what he's done is uh, made it so that little or less support material is needed. So here's a pterodactyl looking thing and it prints like this. And then when you pick it up, oh, okay, that makes sense. Or or as a really good example, this um, this woolly mammoth right here. Look at that woolly mammoth. That's kind of cool, but it prints like this. So then you do it like that. So even though the printing surface was flat, it rests at an angle because that's at an angle. Just like, uh, just like the saber tooth tiger, look at that. So it prints like this and then when you pick it up, that even though that, that flat part from the build plate is right there, it's on the edge. Uh, oh, there's one more. I'm playing with my, my 3D prints. It's another really big pterodactyl model. Uh, the feet have a little brown on them because I left it on my printer and I started to print. So the print head rammed into it and started scooting it around. This is cool, these are fun. So this printed, uh, these printed on the Artemis right here. Uh, this one, this printed on the Artemis as well. Um, all of the prints turned out fantastic. Some were a little hairy, so I had this, I had this idea. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to use a heat gun to take care of the, the wisps of hair on models. First though, let's talk about this one. This was printed on the Zortrax M200 in Z Ultrat material. Build plate on the Zortrax is perforated and it always prints for the raft unless you've modified it or whatever. But trying to free it it just, it didn't pop off very well and it ended up breaking the saber tooth tiger's arm. And let's see, where was the other part? Oh, it's just kind of crackling all over. Oh no, oh. I've heard animals adapt really well to losing a limb. So luckily this saber tooth tiger will live to fight another day. But um, the gray ones, uh, they had some hair. It's just standard. It's Matter Hackers Build Series PLA. I didn't have my settings right, so we're gonna we're gonna hit these with uh, with a heat gun. There we go. As an example, this one has some hairs. So what you can do is kind of pick off the bits that you can with your fingers. Easy enough. And then to take care of those wisps right there, you can just kind of. You don't want to hold the heat on too long. There we go. So now you can see that those wisps are gone and the heat gun just kind of took care of it. That's pretty nifty. Even on this woolly mammoth, look at that. It's got some wisps in places that I can't really get to because, well, because they're right there. So the handy dandy heat gun comes out and you can just kind of do that. And now this woolly mammoth is slightly less woolly. 
There we go. So using a heat gun, even though a print may not come off your printer perfect, you can still recover it and still have it be awesome. In fact, there's an extreme. Look at the look at the wisps on that pterodactyl right there. Let's take care of them. There we go. All prints are different, and if you have a heat gun, then you you need to experiment because it depends on the thickness of the wall or the print itself. Uh, too much heat and plastic will bend, just like like this. So here's this pterodactyl. And we're heating it with the heat gun, and oh my gosh, I've left it on there for too long. And then it's bendable. So dinosaurs are cool, and holding heat to a print for too long will cause it to get bendable. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Once it cools down, it'll well, it'll it'll firm up into a shape and then it'll become solid. <sighs> It's already doing it right there. Well, this pterodactyl belongs with, with that guy as well. What if you have a low poly model? And what if you have a heat gun? And what if you just hold it? What if, what if you just hold it there? What happens? Is the heat gun hot enough to melt the plastic? It looks to be. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, I wonder if this comes off. I didn't plan this well. This is one of those cutting mats, got it off Amazon. It's great because I shouldn't get it too hot or else it'll bow. <laughs> but you know, dinosaurs aside, we've actually stumbled onto something kind of interesting. I've got a Jolbot, and I have a Proto Gnome. The Jolbot, uh, both of these are printed in High Five Blue. This is a spiral print because you can kind of see that it's a little thin on the shoulders and it's a little thin on the feet. The Jolbot is not a spiral print, but uh, I didn't enforce it, so it wiggled a bit. So what I'm wondering, because I haven't played with the High Five Blue, I mean, we already have this out, we might as well, and we're just having some fun. What happens if I hold the heat on the knee of the Joelbot? What do you think will happen? This is Protopasta's High Five Blue, so it's supposed to be able to be annealed, but I think that's heat over time. And this is providing a lot of heat all at once. Wow, it's withstanding it. This is actually, this is actually kind of cool. Wow, I I didn't expect this. I thought we would. Oh, there we go. There we go. It is cooking the filament. And I bet, I bet his leg is. Oh, 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 oh. Here, there are some wisps in the hair. I'll take care of those. Oh no, Joel Bond! Oh no! <laughs> Wait, I can make him stand. I can't believe I'm doing this. Okay. <laughs> May, I mean, I, I miss this. I like having fun. One last thing while we're here. What about a print that is printed in spiral mode or vase mode. You don't have the rigidity of the infill of the multiple perimeters. You also don't have more plastic to help absorb that heat. So the deflection is there, if that's even the right word. There's a little wisp at the top. Let's take care of that. There we go. So here we go. What happens when it's just a single wall?
Okay. So it appears when you have a print that is a just a, a, a single wall and it doesn't have the mass to absorb the heat, then you end up with a model that can be easily deformed with even just a, a, a mediocre amount of heat. That's good to know. That's good to know. I just want to thank everybody for watching. I, I, I wanted to talk about my low poly dinosaurs and we ended up uh, melting things. Which is fine because that was a lot of fun. Hey, you know what? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hug each other more. I love you guys. As always. High five.